ahead. And now, I'm honored to invite Major General in Reserves, Eyal Zamir, Director General of the Ministry of Defense, to present his vision regarding the most important government ministry in Israel. Major General in Reserves, Zamir, please. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here, and Amos, thanking, um, uh, thank you for inviting me to speak here today in this uh, conference, which is a very important conference for Israel's national security. Over the next few minutes, and I promise uh, that I'll be on time, and also because I know that uh, you're going to break for lunch immediately after me, I'd like to describe several processes as a key for uh, the maintenance and strengthening Israel's strength, strengthening the power of the security establishment, and increasing the the IDF's quality edge uh, versus our enemies. Uh, throughout the existence of the State of Israel, basic components in our national security had to do with a combination of diplomatic uh, uh, intelligence and global leadership, as well as our military strength. And all these components are interrelated and are based on our human quality a competitive edge. As we look at the global environment around us, we can notice accelerated changes in comparison to the past. Alliances are changing, threats are changing, uh, rapid entrance of new technologies and demographic, social and economic processes. All these changes are occurring uh, at, at ultimate uh, speed. And here in the Middle East as well, so the threats evolving around us could expand and be unprecedented. And of course, beyond anything else, we have the Iranian threat on all of its components as somebody who was a combatant and a commander over the past past four decades, and also a member of the general staff on the subject of a force design in this past decade. I remember a declaration that was uh, stated about the end of the all-out conventional wars, and the ongoing war in Eastern Europe reminds us several important points that I wish to emphasize. First of all, uh, in more than anything else, the need for humility and responsibility with respect to our projections. This is true, especially in this year, as we uh, mar a year that marks the 50th anniversary of the 73 war. And uh, with the return of the conventional war and the situation estimate in different places in the world, there are different organizations and countries that are preparing, uh, even under pressure, uh, they are rushing to develop capabilities that have been neglected or not prioritized because of an underestimate of certain, uh, underestimation of certain threats. Another issue has to do with the jointness of a military power at the required scope on a long-standing campaign uh, with both offensive and defensive uh, leeway, all that is heightened uh, by advanced and sometimes surprising technology. This jointness is intended to enable multidisciplinary, multidimensional supremacy versus any enemy in every uh, theater until uh, we triumph over the enemy. And the third element has to do with the special conditions of the State of Israel. Under these conditions, the role of the Ministry of Defense is to provide broad, as broad as security as margins as possible and flexibility in decision making for both the top military echelon and the political top echelon. And the fourth need we are talking about is the need uh, for uh, superpower backing, the strengthening of alliances, and an ongoing activity to weaken the alliances of our enemies. A special emphasis must be placed on the special relationship and the strategic alliance with the U.S. as one of the tenants and the pillars of our national security to maintain both the maintaining our military uh, competitive edge and the American willingness to support Israel as it faces threats and to strengthen Israel's international and regional status. In this context, it's important to pay attention to the words of Jack Sullivan, uh, the uh, American security advisor, in another uh, conference of the Washington Institute for a Middle East Institute, and he gave a public, uh, he made it public knowledge uh, that according to the U.S., Israel has full leeway, full freedom 
freedom of action versus the Iranian nuclear threat. And this is completely in line with Israel's security concept because what underlies it is our right and ability to protect ourselves facing any kind of threat. These things were said in public after a meeting I held last month at the Pentagon with Colin Kahl, an undersecretary of defense, regarding the ability of the U.S. to uh, guarantee Israel's unique competitive edge in this region. Thanks to the political and diplomatic wisdom that Israel has had over recent decades, uh, decades uh, the ties have strengthened, uh, and uh, all that was achieved uh, through the peace accords with Egypt, Jordan, and the Abraham Accords. And in addition, the U.S. resolution, a very important decision to include Israel as part of American CENTCOM. These achievements were first and foremost achieved thanks to the fact that Israel is so powerful and is such a great asset. This is what strengthens it, and this is why we need to preserve and even expand these. The Israeli security establishment has a very impressive military capability. Our military strength is uh, tremendous, and we must strengthen it. Our great challenge as the security establishment is to look ahead had to be uh, to be able to respond in time out of a varied as possible toolbox. This is a major challenge that requires a synergy uh, and collaboration between all of our systems because our military strength impacts directly our deterrence, Israel's military status, and decisive victory when that is necessary. The key for decisive victory in the future and present battlefield has to do with the connection between our military strength and the usage of advanced and in innovative technological tools and the ability to increase the gap between us and our enemies in this field. Just like I said at the beginning, at the head of the threats of the State of Israel, we can find Iran through the uh, Revolutionary Guards. It threatens the existence of the State of Israel, strives to undermine regimes, and tries to establish its hegemonic aspirations in the region with as many proxies in the region as possible. Exactly a year ago, in May of 2022, in a paper that I published as a research fellow in the Washington uh, Policy Institute. I uh, listed what uh, Iran needs for victory in the global arena, and I emphasize that this is an ongoing, multi-dimensional and multi-arena uh, effort, and I attribute to the great importance uh, to uh, multi-dimensional, multi-arena activities to weaken their capability. Mostly, they were talking about indirect or condensate operations behind the scenes that have to do with, that it don't weaken that are here to to weaken the Iran. And the ministry has a central role in the force strengthening of the IDF on every front. This is a complex task, particularly in light of the fact that the players in the Middle East adapt themselves constantly to a changing reality. They themselves change; they change their strategy quickly, and with that, the defense of uh, Israel has to change and adapt quickly as well to make sure that we have stable, strong, and flexible military capabilities. Now, in this regard, I'd like to focus on a few issues among the many processes led by the Ministry of Defense, not all of them, just a few. The first is the multi-year plan. This is 2023. This is a year in which we have plans in the works, two uh, major uh, multi-annual plans, one for the IDF and another for the Ministry of Defense. Now, the two uh, multi-year plans are part of the Ministry of Defense overall plan and that of the Ministry. And that will be our in-depth strategy. Depth is a specific word here. Depth in terms of its focus, meaning every project is thorough, is methodical, with all of the envelope of services that are required in order to make it successful, including a budget. And the second sense of depth is the depth, meaning the scope of that project. We'll be able to be better attack and defense capabilities in every level, and with that to increase and to expand our uh, uh, capabilities for what we, what we can consider third parameter or third circle. So the military capabilities of Israel are based on technology, on innovative technology, some of it leading in the world, and many of it is created here, land, sea, and uh, air, in cybernetics, in space. We have advanced attack capabilities, sensors uh, in uh, to closing, and also uh, armaments and artillery 
artillery. In terms of Iron Dome, uh, David and Arrow are some of the best systems in the world, and we will have in the future, I hope in the very near future, laser power power laser, high intensity power laser capabilities that we will uh, spread across the country. And the point of that is to neutralize our enemies and their uh, their attack capabilities that have been strengthened over the decades to reduce the number of people, civilians who are hurt, and also provide overall defense of the state of Israel. The pace of development of our of uh, Magen Ol, our uh, land-based laser, is now in another phase of testing. And after this phase of testing, we will gradually uh, create the first installments across the country. Uh, it won't happen overnight. But we, but there are wonderful people in Mafat, in the IDF, in uh, military in, and defense industries are working night and day in order to make this happen as soon as possible. Another central area, which is breakthrough pioneering area, and I've noticed, by the way, according to the program, Amos, that this is something that we talk about a lot in this conference, and also the Minister of Education talked about it, and I'll mention it as well because it is central, it is pioneering, and certainly in terms of future combat, AI and robotics. And our goal is to make the State of Israel into the, an AI superpower, to be uh, uh, at the top of a short list of countries that are part of the superpower uh, club. And what we've done in cyber, we need to now do in AI. Is Israel is a cyber superstar. And if we can use those capabilities, they are some of the best in the world, and they are constantly being advanced and uh, uh, specialized. And that means identifying in time, in real time, time, any kind of cyber threat, economic, national, international, on whatever th level, Israel and the defense uh, uh, and our defense has prepared ahead of time. And as in my role as consultant to the prime minister, we built an, a, a national cyber directorate despite opposition at the time. And the IDF and the ministry decided to do so. Startups were opened, an industry was opened, a government profile such as the Innovation Authority, along with the Ministry of Science, the Ministry of Education, and of course, a, a other. Uh, bodies have enlisted to the course, and we have high school uh, graduate courses, and we have university courses for cyber, and cyber is an enormous benefit to the Israeli economy and to Israeli defense, and Israel has become a real model, uh, a real example in this regard, and this example has to be what we do in the future for AI. And as I said, right identification, right level of preparedness. That is what's needed. We need right now to accelerate AI, which is Israeli, true and blue, to create with us that kind of a competitive in an edge, and also develop our economy and Israeli industry along the way. And just like other revolutions in the world of combat, there are those who define AI as the next revolution that will change the battlefield. And another fact that's important here lies in that the civilian world is now leading for uh, leading fast development of AI. It's coming from the civilian side, like JPT and HDI as well in the future, considered the next big thing in high tech and technology and in AI as well. They are the kind of directions that will bring new pathways, such as platforms for clusters and swarms and various uh, uh, systems that work to not only uh, function and coordinate in real time, but uh, process data in real time and array forces as needed in real time. And all of this will incorporate it into the future battlefield and we'll lead the day for those who can use them operationally. And within this grand race to be superior in that regard and everybody wrestling to be in the lead, we have to understand the global events that impact this. And because of the enormous importance that I place on being a leader in the, for this, for our security, we are working a, with, for to establish a designated division to deal with AI and robotics threats, and they are interconnected together, they will uh, be the key to success against the enemies of the future. They will be under the purview of Mafat, of course, and uh, with the enormous knowledge and the operational experience that has been accumulated within the defense and uh, IDF and other security forces, the best graduates over the years that have finished these courses and uh, training, we Israeli can be a leader in this regard as well. And if in the past security technologies were ones that were very pioneering in the sense that they were ahead of the civilian game, 
the tables have been turned. Now we're in the military using civilian uh, applications, and that's why we're doing dual R&D. Dual meaning military and civilian, working with startup companies, bringing them into the defense system, as was done very successfully in Inoffense, uh, also by Mafat. Inoffense is a unique program to promote civilian startups, which can also be used for military applications according to a green sort of expressway development course so that they can avoid a lot of the red tape and democracy that uh, halt or slow down a lot of development. Uh, and in order to really stay at the forefront of technology, you have to invest a lot. And so we decided that the major R&D ministry defense budget will uh, uh, be, be bigger than ever uh, specifically for R&D, not only for general uh, uh, developments. We want to enhance our capabilities. We want to invent new capabilities. Another area that is becoming more and more significant is the uh, assure is assuring our supply chains because we're in a world where there are a lot more threats, a lot more disruptions to supplies, and this is something that impacts, of course, defense. This is something that threatens the industry, the economy, and our national independence. Our potential enemies, some of them superpowers, are increasing their efforts and working very in a very sophisticated fashion in order to control and harm critical supply chains across the world. And we can see that this is something that has damaged the global markets. So we have to uh, better our collaborations and reduce the number of disruptions to the supply chains. The reality across the world and, of course, across the region have really clarified the need that we have in order to strengthen our capabilities for local production. Production. The instability across the world makes it clear that we have to have our own assured supply chains as much as we can that rely as least as possible on external suppliers. The Ministry of Defense continues to invest and has, of course, for many years in uh, keeping these crucial supply chains intact and working with uh, partners. And because of this race for supplies across the world, we are doing everything within our power to reduce our reliance on external suppliers in every regard. Now, along, of course, with local production for the IDF and, of course, for defense and security, and after talked about the complexity of this current reality, it's important to keep in mind that there are also opportunities for Israeli defense and economy. The ability to base ourselves on local production and to do quick production is just as important as keeping our technological acumen sharp and something that we're asked in every negotiation around the world and I already met uh, two along the way here that I've tried to make a point with me about this subject is the first question and we're asked this basically in every negotiation and that is when can you provide it when can you supply what we need supplied now it's important to assure the supply chains but also to do so in go a good timeline. And not incidentally, the State of Israel wrote in 2021, patented the ro a a a noted the peak of 11 million 400, 11 billion 400 million, a, a quadrupling of the number from a decade earlier of export. And I can tell you that the peak of 2021 will be broken this year, probably. Uh, this capability also strengthens the economy of Israel, allows us to maintain business uh, continuity in these times of great instability and also brings into the state uh, uh, funds. This military export, which is increasing from year to year, and defense uh, industries here in Israel play a vital role in our national security. These industries are now paying the bills for 100,000 households and subcontracted workers even more. And that's particularly important in the periphery of Israel. And this uh, leading role will continue to be the engine of growth for Israel. This leadership in technologies of the future will have national impact not only in terms of defense and security. It will help Israel close uh, and make closer ties with our partners and make better alliances in the future. Now, just less than two years ago, maybe, when I concluded my position as a deputy to the chief of general staff, in my summary sort of remarks, we, I said that we may actually have to face a long-term 
multi-battlefield campaign with lots of domestic issues and in-depth strategic issues as well. And for that, we have to have decisive ability in times of war. And I said then, the State of Israel needs the best technology it can. But along with that, the critical mass we have to reach, the critical point is that we have to continue to equip, to maintain, and to preserve our uh, operational capabilities in sea, in land, and in air, and in cyber, so that we give our soldiers the best advantage. And that will give them the, the powers that they need, particularly in today, and what we see with Ukraine and other tensions across the world, threats on the border, threats in terms of uh, cyber, threats from every front and angle. Our security uh, from day one has been based on our human capability, our human capital, uh, capital, and we have to ensure that the motivation to from military enlistment, military service, officers' uh, courses are at the highest level and we allow a diversity of people to be incorporated in military service in a high, uh, uh, high, in a high number on varied number of positions. This will improve our human capacity. It will be the founding stone, the cornerstone of our national security. Now, in summary, I would say that the multi-year plan of the ministry is basically aimed at several fronts. Establishing the State of Israel as a regional military power to increase our alliances and partnerships, to make better our relationship with the U.S. and the common interests to the two countries. Two, to provide a broader envelope of security services for decision makers, and also three, to support the IDF uh, long-term plan and provide us multi-dimensional defense capabilities and attack capabilities that are coordinated for to allow an intact and defensible supply chain, local production including that's included in there, five, to expand our military export in a way that's responsible with discretion, understanding that it all comes down to our military R&D and that it has to also benefit our economy. Six, in terms of R&D, to continue to develop our uh, capabilities, our technologies, defense and attack alike in every dimension, in every military band, and to invent in, in the technologies of the future in order to uh, basically see the success that we saw in cyber and translate that to AI and robotics with what we have now is an unprecedented R&D budget, as I mentioned. Thank you for, very much for your attention.